and by the people that I once knew and called my friends. And it was just simply horrible. I, I would not wish some of the experiences that I had on anyone. So the following day after my eighth grade graduation, my parents and I left for Boston's Logan Airport, six hour drive, where I would begin my No Barriers uh, Explore Nepal journey. And really the timing could hardly be more perfect because it was time for me to make a change. And so it was with this backdrop that I found myself halfway around the world in a foreign country with completely new people creating a completely new ethos. So over the course of the trip, I discovered something that I really had already known, but I hadn't fully accepted. My experiences with bullying and alienation were something that I couldn't control. What I, couldn't contr what I could control was my reaction to it. Should I let that negativity infect my life and sap my soul dry? Or could I choose to harness this experience to become a more kind, caring, intuitive, compassionate person. The No Barriers Explore Nepal expedition helped me to gain the strength to move on from my previous school experiences. And it taught me that in order to find new people and make new realities for myself, I have to harness the old reality into optimism in order to create a new life experience. Not to uh, pretend it didn't happen, but rather not to dwell on it negatively so that it saps my power to learn from the experience in a way that allows me to reach higher and overcome barriers that would otherwise prevent me from living my best life. Mm. As the trip progressed, the next um, lesson, life element, that I came, that, that came to mind quite appropriately was summits, or finding the gifts earned through the struggle. We slowly trekked higher in order to adjust to the high altitude, and even though we were taking the time to acclimate to the high altitude, we were still sucking wind at times. It really was a trek at times. So halfway through the trip, we thankfully had the option of riding horses above the village of Kagbeni, which is over 9,000 feet high. And as we traveled, we marveled at the scenery and the, the, just the beauty of the landscape we were in. In some cases, the terrain dropped steeply uh, on a side of the trail so that we could see the, the villages looking so small far below. Um, the, the people I were with described the, uh, the sights to me and Eric and it was truly amazing. Uh, the air was crisp and clean if, if mountain dust, you know, with bits of mountain dust mixed in. And it was just a fantastic place. Himal Himalayan mountains towered above us as we reached Muktanath. Now at 3,710 meters or 12,172 feet, Muktanath is one of the most sacred places in the world for Hindus and Buddhists. As we crested what felt like a mountain of never-ending steps, uh, if you look on the picture, um, that's me in the orange jacket all the way down below. 
Uh, we were met by the sound of rushing water, and this came from the 108 fountains shaped in the form of bullheads, and they were in the walls throughout the, throughout the complex. A few team members actually ran under many of them, but I decided I would just be a chicken and duck my head in just briefly, and man, it was cold. <laughs> The number 108 is sacred in Nepal. It has special symbolic meaning. It has ties to the lunar calendar, and it also has some really mysterious religious underpinnings. Tibetan prayer beads um, feature 108 stones, and the largest stupa in Kathmandu is decorated with 108 images of Buddha. So after exploring the fountains, we went to a monastery nearby where some nuns performed a kind of mm. sacred prayer, and I actually recorded it with a recorder I had brought along, and I'd like to play just a little segment of that for you now. something really beautiful and otherworldly about Buddhist or Hindu chanting. And I really found it extremely grounding, although uh, when, I, I have to admit, when the horns and the drums came in, um, it really did um, break me out of my meditation. Um, but I really do respect all joking aside, I really do respect the significance of that gesture. And it was definitely one of the gifts that we received for having made the arduous journey. As we rode back to the village of Kagbeni, I marveled at all we had seen that day. We had reached our summit. We had rode and hiked to one of the most sacred places on earth and experienced something really that was beyond us. We had done it and there had been countless gifts earned through the struggle. As our expedition came to an end, our group, in a closing ceremony, focused on the last no barriers life element, which is elevate. This expedition had been fun, there's no question, but it was not a vacation. We had gone to Nepal to learn about ourselves as people and to do that while exploring a totally new culture and embracing the no barriers spirit. <clears throat> now it was our turn to go to our various homes and find ways to give back. We decided to split into two groups to create projects to give back to some of the organizations we had learned about and met throughout our time in Nepal. One group 
chose to raise funds for the Mustang Youth School, I believe it was called, in uh, Jamsum. And I chose um, to join the group uh, that is raising funds for the School for the Deaf because of my profound experience there. Giving back is a great example of the No Barriers life element, Elevate, to impact the world as a leader who serves. Our trip had been an awe-inspiring opportunity to expand our horizons and broaden our knowledge on how to break through barriers in our lives. And a big part of this is making this, sharing this knowledge with the world and I am so honored to share a bit of what I experienced with you. And I hope that we can inspire each other to live our best No Barriers lives. Thank you and Namaste. Thank you very much, Noah. That was incredible. Uh, questions for Noah on his trip and what he experienced while he was there. We also have Eric still with us. And Eric's still on the. I have a quick question. Yes. No, it's Tara. Do you remember the sign language, the alphabet, so you can teach you? Um, unfortunately, I um, I did name? not remember as much. I did not remember. Um, I, I did not remember the alphabet. However, I do remember, if, if my memory serves me right, that it, the letters, at least, are the same as ASL, except for, I believe it's G and the letter T. Um, oh. I believe those are the only two differences. Again, if my memory serves me right. Um, but, yeah. And you're awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Tara. <laughs> You know, I, I can attest to the no barriers thought process that, uh, and I've, ne I've never told this, Eric, when, when I was in business all my life, I'd done it, I knew the business inside and out, whenever I did anything, I knew my instincts, knew all about it, I knew how to do it, and when Anne-Marie and I started on this journey that we're on now, there were nights I laid in bed and looking up at the ceiling and said, you know what the hell you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> and it was more than one night. And knowing Eric and going back to his motto, what's inside you is stronger than what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. And just going back to his tenets, thinking, you know, just keep at it, keep at it, because it'll work. And because we had no idea what would happen. And, you know, obviously we're thrilled with, you know, the, where, what's happened to us and where we're going and what's going on. And, you know, enabling helping young men like Noah being able to realize a dream and you know you just have faith in yourself and you can accomplish things that you never knew you could do and it's just and that's why you know going out to uh, being around Eric and with his group and seeing these people just overcoming things and what we see every day too I mean made adaptive people here what we do as volunteers and helping it it's all it's all around us and it's just it's wonderful and you couldn't find a better group of people than that's in this room tonight. And uh, so I... Eric, do you have anything you'd like to say after hearing Noah's talk? Uh, I mean, I know you did tell me I was supposed to bring Kleenex. Beautiful and insightful and uh, like really is wisdom beyond like what I could imagine somebody your age having. Uh, <laughs> it's just, uh, really, really impressive, and um, uh, you should join me on the motivational speaking circuit for sure. Aww. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you've grown so much, and. Uh, that presentation just summed it up and was so incredibly articulate. So, um, man, what a, I'm so glad I, I, I could listen to it. And I hope oh, you guys recorded you. it. And I don't know if you did, mm -hmm. but I mean, I want to listen to that talk a few more times. <laughs> you can. Well, we, we, got it on <laughs> we got it on camcorder. Great. Any questions for Eric? 
Barb? I'm curious as to why Nepal was chosen. Eric, the question from Barb is why was Nepal chosen? special tie to Nepal too, Eric. young men like this don't just happen. And this, I'm sorry, it's two very sp special people, Roz and Suzanne, that have raised us. Thank you to people like Bruce and Anne Marie that we were so lucky to cross paths with because really just you guys have taught me so much um, about skiing and life and just it's been so awesome to know you guys and I just thank you so much and I'm thank the lucky stars that our paths crossed. Well, you've, you've also had a tremendous amount of support in this room. You know, this is a team effort, and a lot of people yeah. here have had a lot to do with the growth of what you've done. So, so, okay. so thank you very much, everybody. We have, for your Epicurean delight, we have some <laughs> dal bat, which is lentils and spices on rice, which is a national dish in Nepal. Takiri, which is a vegetable dish and spices, and also a small tea cake. And... Uh, they're set up on the back table, so enjoy that. And but before we do that, I would like to um, I'd like to just lead us all in singing "Happy Birthday" to one Anne Marie <laughs> Anderson. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anne Marie. Again, thank you very much, everybody, for coming tonight. We really appreciate it, and hope you enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.